connective tissue disorder. Now, we all know connective tissue disorder is a difficult disease, whether it's Marfan or the more complicated Lois Dietz or some other forms. The common denominator is aneuroaortic ectasia, that is root aneurysm, which is usually associated with annular dilatation. We do have the two techniques that can be used. And here, because there is annular dilatation, we have the choice between re-implantation. I'm sorry, in, in copying the slides, the arrows uh, slid upward. We stabilize the root really at all levels, including the annular, while in root remodeling, it's primarily sinus and sinotubular junction that are stabilized. A disclaimer, I've used both techniques and I've made my mistakes with both. But apart, the question is not what have I done or what do I think, what is the evidence? Actually, this 12 years ago could have closed the debate. If we look at Tyrone David's results, and I had to go into the fine print of the publications, reimplantation, excellent freedom from reoperation, excellent freedom from AR more than grade two. Um, so much better than his own results with remodeling. And Magdi, with all due respect, and I think he's a great person and a great surgeon, he, his results were even worse. However, these were not the only failures. This study here analyzed 100 patients. Some Marfan patients were among them. And actually, my first 30 reimplantation procedures were also in the study group. The analyzed modes of failure came up with this publication and simply contributed failure to the level at which the valve was implanted within the graft. In retrospect, at least I can judge by the operations, by the failures I produced and I reoperated, this was more generalized prolapse rather than uh, simply the level of operation. And I showed you this slide again just to remind you the question is not which operation is done, but how it is done. Whatever you do, you can induce prolapse. And this needs to be taken into consideration when you analyze published series. So I'm not sure I can give you a perfect result. One of the difficulties of re-implantation, always keeping in mind David's results were 12 years ago, great, unbeatable, is this ventricle inside the sinus. And this is one of the caveats. If you know, now go for re-implantation, you will have to cut deep into the right ventricle. Trust me, I've been there, and sometimes you, you can create big holes. In addition, there is at least a the theoretic argument that root remodeling leads to more physiologic cusp motion. Can you click on this? Uh, I cannot. Now here it's coming, as opposed to re-implantation. These videos are from an in vitro study that we did uh, more than 10 years ago. So theoretically, root remodeling should result in more physiologic cusp motion. And of course, root remodeling can be combined with an annuloplasty. Nevertheless, there are still the David data out. And these data show better durability with reimplantation than root remodeling. His most recent publication here in Jack, three years ago, shows similar information, excellent long-term results, freedom from re-operation of um, close to 90% at 18 years. And if he, here he compares remodeling, this is freedom from relevant AR, 
remodeling actually an increasing, a worrisome incidence of relevant aortic regurgitation beyond 15, 16 years. Of course, there are also other results, and not everybody is able to reproduce Tyrone's results with reimplantation. Here we have 60 patients, and this paper was just published recently. Good survival, and actually we have seen worse freedom from reimplantation than with remodeling. And this could at least as a trend be improved further by annuloplasty. Let me summarize. Yes, root remodeling is the shorter operation. It probably results in better and more physiologic cusp motion. And the addition of an annuloplasty increases the proportion of competent valves. It also treats the specific problem that we see in connective tissue disease. But annular dilatation, even though acutely it can be treated by annuloplasty, is the problem that we need to pay attention to. And whether it can be stabilized long term with an annuloplasty the same way it is done with reimplantation is still uncertain. Valve reimplantation has the longest documented durability and remains the standard of care in valve preserving surgery until equivalent results can be produced. Thank you for your attention.